Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This is a sea fishing special that is sponsored by Namura and Sidewinder Lures. Now we're going to try and get this tackle tested, that's what they ask us. Go out and see what you can catch on these rods and reel outfits. That's just what we're going to do, straight out of the sea, on Mark Gannon's boat, see what we can do. Get on there! <laughs> Gonna need new elbows. Good fish. Well, every fish is a good fish. It's got plenty of power, this rod. It's kicking, it's because it's kicking. It would be nice to think, because Mark did say they get uh, occasional cod in here as well, so ironically, oh. Big jellyfish down there. That's, that's a lovely colour catching it. Nice fish, my, uh, Graham. There's no need to grab it, Rex. <laughs> nice fish. Wherever we go, peeps. Never used this lure in my life before. I had one bang on it. I just fancied that colour. Then that one's called the Skerries sidewater scaries but it's just a, such a long narrow one it's got to be natural for a fish like this predatorial pollock to nail it and so it turned out lovely looking fish and I had a, I had a good bang on the way down with talking to Mike filming lovely looking fish it was snap it'll snap yeah what oh, Jesus! Oh, <laughs> it's floating. <laughs> it's still floating. Dad's got it on the hook. He's got it. With a net, with a fish. Bit of DIY. And the gaff. That's the way you get them on this boat. Take those fish. That's not what happened. The handle of it. Well, guys, we've just had one drift on this second wreck mark, which took us to a total contrast to the first one. Bigger fish. Nearly everybody's had a fish up there and I've even got a decent pollock size. Now look how they blow up there, these are eating fish. That's the pressure change, and one of the guys has just had a cold fish. Oh, I love to catch a cold fish, because they fight all the way to the surface, and they don't suffer from the bends, pressure blowing up like this fish does. Oh, come on. I think it's on the uh, Crusader, the pink Crusader. Oh, he's come off, I reckon. Yeah, he's come off. I just felt it kick off. Absolutely hammered it, to be fair. It wasn't a slow take, he just gulped it. This thing's taking ages. Come on. <laughs> double, double hook up. Double trouble. Totally awesome double trouble. Red and blue. Jeez. Oh, here we go, here we go. What have I got? What is that? It's all the air. I've almost got a ling. Ling, nice. Come on. <laughs> yes, here we go. Ling on the lure, look, there's, there's the, yeah, the rattle back. Yeah, Dad's in. What do you reckon, Dad? Well, it's it Mark's got a monster ling, he's just yeah, had down Mark there, look at that. The back of the neck, yeah. That's, That's a big, big ling. Big ling. That's it. And Dad's hooked up here. You can see by the bend. 
I've, I've got a ling as well. well it could be a lure because it's on a side wider lure. But yeah. It'd be interesting if the ling's taking a side wider lure because I just hit the deck. Yeah. And about three turns, bang. So I yeah, feel, yeah. I feel it might be a ling. That's a, that's and the a... other guys loaded up over there as well. Yeah, got fish coming up everywhere now. There we go, guys. You can get on the giant size sidewinder a nice ling. See a nice fish. He's good eating size. These ones. Fish like that. No trouble taking that big lure. And the big thing I've got here is he hasn't shredded it. Something on here. Something on. Yeah. Oh, it's crash diving. Tuna pumps. There's so much flex in the rod. <laughs> Look at it. Ah, uh, he's come off, he's come off. Well, that was a, definitely a case of red versus blue. Red came out on top, I feel. It was, yeah, very close, but good fishing, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, we had some good fishing out there. You know, a long way out, 30 miles 30 out 30 miles, in a yeah. Now, just so you know, guys, these are popping rods, aren't they? They're lure rods, really. Yeah, they're big, but, they're big, heavy lure rods, but we wanted to put them to the yes. test, really, because you can get some big fish off the wrecks here over yeah. in Ireland. I mean, we've had some big ones. We've seen some big ones come up as well. Big pollock, big ling. So something to put a bend in these rods and test them out. So what, run through yours, Dad. What's your setup? Okay, going to read it, guys. You know me and modern back I've got, got to read everything. The reel I've got here is one of the Namura rays. Now, we have used Namura before, and we're on ultralight yeah. tackle, but nothing as heavy as this. I'm going to call that AEG -E -E SW550. SW so this throws 120 grams. It is, I shall read it and tell you the length of it. It's a 120 gram rod, okay. It's eight feet, 10 long. I personally think it'd be quite a good up tiding rod as well. 2.7 meters, it's called PE4, which I guess must be the construction of yeah. it. What's the casting weight? No, but the actual rod class, because you could take a big fish on this, is 40 to 55 pound test, that one. It's got a break point here. It's not a two piece that breaks up here. Yeah. It's a two piece that twists out. That's quite unique, isn't it? I've not seen one like it's sort of like a beach, like your old beach. Eventually, stuff. nice long throat on it there as well. So a long shaft that goes down in that butt. So the ferrule goes right down in the butt, a good big powerful four, four power and a half there, inches. It? The rest of it is total blank. The other thing it's got, it's got these anti-tangle, it's called anti-tangle rings. And I guess if I show you that one, it's because it's slanting forwards. Yeah. I don't know, we've only been sent these for test. Yours has the same, so it's something to do with the cast. Yeah, we've got the same rings. Mine is a, a popping special, SW150, so it casts 150 grams, which shows you you know, the, the type of heavy lures that this thing could cast, probably big surfing, surface poppers, um, and just generally big lures. Uh, seven foot eight or two, seven foot 10, sorry, or 2.4 meters. Uh, the reel, I'm using a slightly smaller reel. It's, a, it's one by Namura as well. It is an HE. But this is uh, the 4,500, so it's a size down from Dad's. But what I did notice was yesterday, it's got a little gimbal cross cut in the butt. I don't know if it's yours got yeah, the same? Yeah, it's the same, yeah. They both have. So if you had, look, these rods are intended. I mean, this is rated. What's the line rating on that poundage? What is that one? On the reel? No, the there. Rod. What's that? I can't say. 50 Six, to 70 pounds. 50 yeah. to 70 pounds. That's even more than this. But they've got a nice long butt section for the casting. It's for casting it's a long for way. The, the power. But Done you can there. put that gimbal into a rod butt in front of you mm. if you're surface popping and you can crank and crank and crank and if you load up on a fish you've got yeah. plenty of power there and you know that's not going to skid all over the place. Okay so what did we catch on yesterday when we were out drifting over the wrecks? I personally rummaged through the tackle box and came up with a sidewinder that I like the look of the colour and the shape. It's called a Skerry's Eel. Some of these are new models. We know Sidewinder, they're world famous. They are fish We've catching, used their lures they're for years, fish catching yeah. machines. Loads of you anglers out there have heard of Sidewinder lures, but they're always bringing out new ones. Dave Kitty, Kitty Wholesale, and Sam are always bringing out new stuff. They talk to charter skippers, they get the feedback, and then they go out and put it into practice, and that helps the angler. So this is a Skerry's Eel, six inches, 25 grams. Now you can cast that one there, but like I just well, I just yeah. like the shape because it looks like a launch, which is the greater sandal we get here in the UK. So uh, I actually started out with one of these Crusader shads, and I lost that first fish, and I got that fish really early. Uh, but I've always been a big fan of pink when I've when when we're you know deep dropping off wrecks and reefs here, either in Ireland or UK. I've always been a big fan of pink, uh, especially for pollock and cod. Uh, last time I came to Ireland two years ago, mm. I did so well on a pink lure. Remember, yeah. Now this one is called the Crusader Shad, and it's actually quite interesting. It's got a face 
uh, it almost looks like a tarpon, doesn't it, really? It's like women's jewellery to me, I'll tell it, you, that's it, a good colour. It looks like tarpon, yeah. Uh, but this one is four inches and it's 23 grams. It, it, it would probably cast incredibly well, but I would say vertical jigging, this is this is probably your best bet. It's got that upslanted lip as well, uh, you know, like the, the, the tarpon face there. But very good colour. Nice size. I really like this size of lure, about four inches. I'm, yeah, a, big, not, I'm a big fan of four. Bite size. Yeah, I'm a big, for pollock and cod, I'm a big fan of about four to five inch lures. Well, after catching a few pollock on my rig and my lure, I had to, we call it the bomb. <laughs> I had to up. drop the bomb, which is monster, monster lures. Now, these were weedless. I'm going to tell you what they are because these are, these are all fairly new from Sidewinder. I think they only yeah. came out this year, as far as I know. It is a weedless, seven inches long, Norway minnow. It's a hundred grams, so I'm guessing that's the sort of thing. If you went to Norway or somewhere, that, yeah. that's what well, it's dropping, ironic. How it? it's called a minnow, meaning the size of the fish they get over there and lures they use over but in Norway. But it's weedless, so you can see how the hook just slots lines in. up, slots in the back there. But you know they've got a good weight for dropping down. And actually, I got a ling as you saw. Mm. I did get a ling on these, yeah. so they're good. Uh, now one of the other lures that I did actually catch on and land the fish was, and this is another one I think from Sidewinder called the Rattleback. Really quite unique lure this. So um, this, just to give you an idea, is six inches, so it's slightly longer, but it's got that narrow kind of sand hill shape really, isn't it? And it's 42 grams, so it is heavier. It's a heavier jig head. But I love the color. I'm a big fan of translucent lures like that. Mm. And actually just behind the hook, there is a rattle, and I don't know if you can hear this. There's a rattle just there behind the hook. Now you can charge, it's also glow in the dark as well, so you can charge that up in the sun. It was lovely and sunny yesterday, because we're deep dropping, it's gonna be, I think it was 100 meters, Mark was saying? Uh, we're fishing yeah, 110 yeah, meters yeah. deep. Yeah, so it's gonna be way yeah. darker down there than it is up on the surface. It's not gonna be pitch black, but it will be darker. So that extra bit of boost from that glow in the dark rattle at the back there, I think really made a difference. Now, today, a different day. It is. We're going in a small boat, one of Mark Gannon's small self-drive boats. We love those to death, don't we? Oh, they're brilliant. We're, we're yeah. captain for the day. And what are we going to be taking? What, what have I got? What have I got? Well, I like light. Super light. This what one, you can read that. So that's, that's another surface popping one that we're going to try and get bent on a fish. Now this is one of the Icy range, which I had the Icy Pro before. It was probably one of my favorite rods of last year yeah. for my mackerel, pollock, rassing, bass, everything like that. And it was, it was a really, really good rod and it cast about 10 to 35 grams. But this is stepping it up. This is casting 100 grams. Again, nice big long butt section for casting. Using the same reels as we did um, yesterday. Using the 4.5, 4, yeah, yeah. 4,500 on but that the, I, the, the, This is a much more kind of high carbon blank. My outfit's a light one. I've got one of these, uh, I like these little reels. We've had these, what, a couple of years oh, now? Oh, they're brilliant, yeah, with our five pieces. And Namura, again, what do they call that? Is it That's the Aiko. Aiko, A-I-K-O. But, you know, they're fairly high speed retrieve, which is good for lure fishing. Um, this one is... Well, man, oh, you well. can read 100, that. You 160 read that. gram casting weight and 2.1 meters. But we want to test the action on the blank on a fish. So it's all very jig. well, as you know. All the all the tackle in the world doesn't catch you the fish. No. You can talk about it like we are now, but we've already put that into practice. We've been out, we've bent the rods, we know they catch fish. We're going to do the same today with a small boat. And we're going to be going out. What are we going to be fishing for? We're going to be deep, well, I say deep dropping. We'll be vertical jigging, really. Uh, for Pollock, hopefully. We're going to try for bass just over on the far cliffs over there, just slow trolling with bass, because this would be fine, because it's a nice long rod. So we'll try some slow trolling for bass. Um, but then I think if the bass fishing is not picking up, which is not at the moment, it's flat calm. we will go over to one of the inshore rocks and reefs, yeah. and we'll just deep drop for some Pollock, um, hit the deck, wind up nice and slow, and probably use smaller lures today, I'd say. I feel this pink one's going to get... Uh, yeah, definitely. That's going to get dropped. toasted today. The old Crusader's going straight down the gulf. Eaten. That's going to get eaten today. Let's go. Let's get out in the boat. Yep, got to take it. Yeah, fish on, no problem. No problem, it's not a big one, on a sidewinder. Only on the second drift. We're using a plastic boom up there and a nice pollock. Yeah, not a big fish. 
nice, nice condition. Perfect reef size pollock. And there's a sidewinder lure, and that's like a fire tail. That's like a good target. Any any fisherman should know that that little bright red spot there is a good target spot. It just sort of turns them on a bit. There, it commits them. They can be following that lure, and then they see that red uh, vibrating tail there, and they just can't resist it. I feel there's going to be more. Fish on again. That was really, really shallow. And that's a better fish. Hammered it, absolutely hammered it. That's quite, quite shallow we came into the reef that time. And you can feel the jig going through um, the kelp. There's all the kelp beds there. And he was just going, juddering through the kelp beds. And just as I got the lure out of the kelp bed, boom, he grabbed it. He's even got his fins up for you there. He's obviously a star for YouTube, that one. Brilliant. You can see how close over there we are to the reef. Uh, do you know what, oh, Mike, I'm wondering uh, if the fish are in here, maybe we should try those weedless. I think I might go weedless, yeah. yeah. Well, leave, it in the, leave it in the kelp for a bit longer. Yeah, well, what we've what we done, guys, we'll put this one back. Because it's so shallow here, there's another Nomura one. We didn't show it to you, but it's a five-piece rod. We love those. Last they're year really, we really good. Yes, yeah. little Nomura. Got a bump as well, yeah. yeah. I think I've been... Yeah, come on! Ooh. Oh, he's crash diving! Oh man, this is a good fish! Come on, baby, come on! Here we go, on the pink, pretty in pink! Woo! Whoa! Sorry, you've got the waterproof casing on, that's a nice fish. Look at the pink there. Let's grab this puppy for you. Oh, he's pulled up, there's the pink lure. Look at that, look how well that's hooked, Dad. That's the old uh, Crusader. On the Crusader show. On the yeah. Crusader, yeah, what that's, a fish. That's the one that uh, everybody seems to like, that pink, doesn't they? Pink. Yeah. I'm going to drop that down if you're fishing. Yeah, you know, no, Did you get a, a take then? I had a bearing of missed it, yeah, sorry. I can't get down quick enough when it gets fishing like this. I'm not, oh. I'm not telling Mike the secret how I'm getting these bangs, but... I know the secret. This is called a cast. Oh, yeah, but he's... Oh, I pulled it out of his mouth, pulled it out of his mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost double hook up, almost. Still kicking this one. Yeah. Left around this. Area. And people wonder why we come out small boat fishing, eh? It's not a bad fish. This is not a bad. F oh, oh Dad, that's, a good that's, not, that's. I'm getting bigger by the. Fish. Look at the size. Oh, good. Today. That's a good one. Biggest so far. That's a really nice fish. And you're killing it with that lure, Dad. Well, is it the lure or is it the fact? The skill of the angler. The skill of the angler, the dangler. You can see what I told you guys about that little red tag there. And look at that pollock set against that background. That is the best of Irish fishing. Jet this one in. If you, we were turning most of our fish today, probably all of them. Just jet it in like this. Straight away he's gone. What I'm doing here while Mike changes lures, you can see the rock over there. There's also a buoy in here we're using as a mark. But I'm not going screaming up there, I'm just going at a regular steady speed because I don't want to spook the fish in this shallow water. And then with the wind coming this way, I let the boat, let's get that camera around there for you, let the boat, what we call the way on the boat, come off. I turn it, I want it full tide to the wind. I'm then going into reverse gear, crank the engine over, and that pulls the bow round. You should be able to see it moving. Out of gear, engine off, lines down. Fish on, this could be a better weight, you know. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Yes! Sun's coming out, we're catching fish, we're over in Ireland, it's a fishing holiday, life is good. Oh, good bite. Good take, though. Good fish. I think the term is yeehaw. Yeah, nice one. And snag. Well, I snagged up on the rod, and Dad's just rigging up the other one, and I got absolutely hammered by this. Uh, I've stolen Dad's rod as he does with me so many times. We do reckon it's the small light lure as well doing the job, but it's another fish. 
There we go. Another fish. Not a huge one, but if I turn it that way, there's the the, the, the lure doing the damage on this. Uh, Is that this red tail? Yeah, on the tail? it could be the red tail. Kill. Less of a lead in it as well, so we're, we're keeping it in the kill zone for longer. Yeah. And but, they want it pretty slow, don't they? Yeah, really slow retrieve. And that was the first time I've used the reel with braid. Dad's reel with braid, and it's way better. One last look. Prime eating fish, but we're going to put it back. Away. Oh, this is a good one. Let's go. Oh, look at the robin. This could be a good pollock. This could be my pollock of the day anyway. Come on. Oh, that's got a few more head shakes, so it might be a smaller fish, but that absolutely crash dive, Dad. Come on, puppy. There we go. Another fine Irish pollock. Ground one, that is. That's sold. a ground one. Going back. A lot of people will be sick that we're putting these good eating fish back, but we do a lot of catch and release on Totally Awesome. Hate to say it, Dad, I'm catching up. Yeah, you certainly are. Come on. What's happening is the wind's dropped, isn't it? And it's slow. Oh, it's, yeah, it's lovely weather. Oh, oh, he's got some energy. Still got some energy in him. Not bad one. Tangled the boom up big time. Got the other line. Yeah. That's the one with the fish. Oh, he's inhaled that sidewinder. Well, guys, I just pulled out of a snag. Luckily, I've got the lure back. But this is what we're running the lures through. You can see that's just a part of the, uh, this is kelp. It's a type of seaweed. It would be this way up, probably. But that's just part of the weed. It's even longer than that. I mean, this grows, what, 8, 10, 15 oh, feet? Oh, it does, yeah, especially like, in the huge. Alaska places. Yeah, yeah, this grows really, really deep. But this is where the pollock live, in this kind of territory. So you're dragging, obviously, weedless lures would be better. It's but not plastic, isn't because it? Because we're, plastic. oh, it's like, it's rubber. It's basically like rubber. Do they make gelatin or something um, like that? I think they do, yeah, it's edible. They make soap, they make soap. It's edible, yeah. it's very good for you. Uh, but do I'm you not going to eat, eat it? any at the moment. <laughs> no, I can eat it, but I'm not going to at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's what we're pulling through, and you can snag in. You can see, the, look, that's, that's how my hook's snagged into it, just there. Yeah, we're trying to get across the top of it, So we're really, trying to, we? we're hitting the deck with this lead, here, the nut, that sliding boom, yeah, so that you... hits the deck first, guys. You feel that hit the deck, then you speed crank to get that up. As you do that, this, hopefully, doesn't do what that does, but this lure comes just above the kelp, and that's where the fish come out of the kelp and then nail your lure. So you do need to hit the bottom and then come up. But what we're thinking is, because this, because the, well, the drift's really slow now, and we've realised that there's enough lead weight in, not probably not this one, but the lure up from this, maybe shad. the Crusader one or something, Crusader one or something like that, heavier shad, we're going to go direct to the line with no boom. But that's really risky snag-wise, so it's going to be hit the deck, Straight speed up. crank, four or five wines, get it above the kelp, and then really slow retreat. That's the plan anyway. Well, I'm going to have another cast out. Just drop the lure and just lob it away from the boat. Slow it just before it hits. And I'm feathering it as it's going down with my fingers over the edge of the spikes, just feathering that down. I don't want it going too fast and the lure spins up around the main trace. And through the braid I can feel it's hit the bottom, bang, straight off the, off the deck and then I just retrieve nice and smoothly. The big thing to do with pilot fishing, we all make the mistake, is you feel a there's a bite there. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It's just, oh, what? It's not a big fish, but you, I was just describing how you don't, you know, when you don't jerk wind, at the fish. Wind them just wind them slowly on. And I think this is the technique of pulling it across the top of the, working. top of the kelp beds at an angle. Well, I've had one fish on the vertical. Yeah, well, this is vertical. Four or five. That Namura five piece we always leave down with a, with a rubber bait on it, just hanging there, and invariably it's very successful. But at the moment, I'm not complaining. Let's hope we don't lose these weights because they're uh, actually salmon fishing weights and they're rare. It's another nice fish. It is it just going around the propeller? Oh, dear me. Yeah, when you cast, you've got to make sure it doesn't tangle. He is absolutely, look at the size of the mouth. He sucked that sidewinder absolutely back down there. So they must be on the feed mark with that tide, uh, so, yeah. tide flooding. 
That's a corker. That's nice a fish. Now we get more. They're on the bike. I'll tell you what, Namura and Sidewinder said, go and test some stuff. Well, hang on. <laughs> How badly do you want it tested? The rods work, the reels work, line works. We know the lures work. Here is the proof of the pudding. Spanking nice big reef pollock, caught in a self-drive boat. Oh, that was lucky. Just hanging there. I'll tell you what, people. Get yourself out here. Caught McSherry, self-drive boat. Rods, reels, lures, and just come out in the bay on this reef. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Coast to coast, the miles that separate burn the most. At night while you're away, and 